Hi, my name is Devin Knight, and welcome back to our Who Is series, uh, where today we're going to be talking with Manuel Quintana. <laughs> he uh, kind of quizzed me on making sure I said it right ahead of time, so I think I did okay. Nice did accent. Right? Hit it hard on there. It's Q-U-I-N, but sounds like a king. King, not, not queen. King yeah. Tana. Correct. Uh, so, Manuel, first of all, let's start off by uh, letting everyone know a little bit about yourself. What do you do here at Pragmatic Works? Uh, perfect, absolutely. Um, I was brought on um, after uh, a great program we have, Foundation, kind of taught me some basics. Uh, started in support department, mm -hmm. um, and then from there, you know, with customer experience and gaining technical knowledge, um, I work closely with our clients that have our tools okay. and our sales team. So I, I'm uh, the title is a software engineer. So that's where I've come so far. Gotcha. So you mentioned the foundation. For, for those yeah. that don't know what that is, what's, what's the foundation that we do? Absolutely. Uh, foundation was perfect. Uh, if you're someone who's looking to maybe gain some knowledge or trying to transition to this area of business intelligence, mm -hmm. this class is offered. It's free. For those who are who meet the standards, so you can go on our website and get the information, but it trains you in T-SQL. I actually learned a little bit of reporting services, Yeah. and that was my foot in the door to the rest of what I've done, and it's been great. I've loved every moment, um, so I, I recommend it to everybody. I've had uh, some friends try to go through it. Uh, it's, it's great. So you mentioned uh, it was your foot in the door, so you obviously came from a different type of career. What's, yeah. what's your background? Where did you come from? Well, it, it worked out great for the support side. I actually was eight years as a hospitality manager. Uh, operations, front desk, so I went from dealing directly only with people, right. a minimal technology, to now in this world of information that we have. Yeah. Uh, so it, it transitioned nicely from where I've gotten. And just with hard work and the resources we got, we have here at Pragmatic Works, uh, the technical side is coming along. I think. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, so if you don't, don't if you haven't spoken with Manuel through our support department, he's kind of worked his way through support department. Mm -hmm. Uh, is one of our senior engineers now, so it's great, great for him. Yeah. Um, so, what is what's one of your favorite things about working at Pragmatic Works? Um, the environment. I mean, you asked the question where I came from and you know, what I'm doing now. Yeah. Uh, and the first and foremost, this is, I guess, I usually tend to th say things that require disclaimers. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but small disclaimer. Professionalism at its utmost here and everywhere I've worked. That's an important thing, but. The work-life balance here at Pragmatic Works is fantastic. I yeah. work with a, what I consider a family. And I had my friends and associates at the hotel, but here um, it just feels like it's more interconnected. And you know, to be honest, not only is that within Pragmatic Works, but in the SQL Saturdays I've gone to yeah. and past, it feels as though the BI community, it's one big happy family. Yeah. So that is probably the one thing. Work-life balance and just you know yourself and Brian, you guys, it's, it's just nice to be connected to every part of the business. It doesn't feel segregated when you work for a corporation. Right. Uh, you never see the CEO, CFO, right. or if you do, you know, you might he might ask you just to clean a shoe, and <laughs> not know if you actually work for him. Um, but yeah, that, I'd say Speaking that's of which, I have some dirty shoes. Dirty shoes. <laughs> dirty shoes. Yeah, and some on. laundry. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, speaking of which, I think this kind of intermingles into what you just said. What's what's one of the funniest experiences you've had while working here? I know you've had a lot. Yeah. What's one that is is safe to share uh, with others here? The funniest experience. I mean, other than the fact that I planned to completely shave for this interview and they're still scruff, <laughs> um, and I forgot. I would have to say. Uh, to be honest, it's probably this is it's not like an accident encounter, so it's not like funny in the normal sense. Yeah. But here at Pragmatics, we we do like to have uh, jokes, uh, inter office mingling, um, and I'd have to say some of the best ones. And I actually wasn't to witness this, but I love the story. Was the one where the fake selling of a a, a fake selling of an employee's car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> That for some reason I you know, gets my gets my uh, gets me the jollies. That was that wasn't a pretty elaborate story. Oh. So that's uh, and I've <laughs> recently come into my own and started to uh, record and scare people. Yes, of course, business first throughout the day. This is more of as people come into the office, catch them off guard. Yeah. Uh, so that's my new trend. I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying that. <laughs> Yeah, you're, he's, he's being kind of light. He's, he's a little bit more of a prankster, I think, than he's letting on. But he's very yeah. professional still. Got to keep yeah. the secrets, you know? Yeah. I can't let everything out of the box. Yeah. There's, there's probably a couple brewing right now that I don't know about. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Do I have pants on? They don't know. <laughs> They'll never know. We'll see. They'll but never know. It's the environment we work in. I love it. It can be serious, but we can also have fun. Because if you can't do that, um, 
what's going to bring you back in the next day? Right. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that's always interesting to find out about people is, um, you know, what, what do you do outside of work? What are some of your hobbies, interests? I know, I actually know you have quite a few. Uh, what, what kind of things are you really interested in? I do. Um, gosh, it, I'm an oddball. Uh -huh. I'm all over the place. Um, you know, you're stereo, I, I love sports. I, I haven't done it in a while, but I love tennis and soccer. Okay. Uh, those are probably my two favorite. Um, I was actually going to, one of my follow-up questions was going to be, what's your favorite sports? Th those two, I'd say... Um, I, I played them both equally. I'd have to say I like watching. Probably other people watching this think, well, those are the, probably the most too boring to watch. <laughs> uh, I really love watching soccer. It was a big part of my life, uh, high school-wise. Um, actually, was number one in the nation. You could check it out. Mem Melbourne Central Catholic Ooh. ended number one in 2003. So in the nation, not in the just nation. The wow. We went to national. Yeah, it was great. It was wow. Fantastic. Uh, got a nice ring for it. It's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, <laughs> but other than sports, because you, you have kind of normally that outlet, I. Uh, I love you know playing board games, uh, video games. Uh, I guess one thing is I try to rationalize this is I'm not the biggest book reader. I yeah. actually do audiobooks. Yeah. Um, but I actually love the cinema. Okay. And I like to say cinema because I like to sound fancy. And honestly, when I go to a movie, the experience I get, I feel like I delve in the depth of a character. I like to watch the lighting, the film, you know, how everything's filmed, mm -hmm. the, the, the the tension in voices, everything. I feel like I get what other people receive in books. I used to watch my mom and sister read books, and they would laugh in the middle of a paragraph. And <laughs> I, I could never get that out of a book. I don't right. know. I don't know if that speaks to a lack of creativity. Um, but movies deliver that to me. It's really a, that's a big release for me, going to go just sit down, enjoy a movie, and really involve myself in this world. Yeah. So, like I said, it's weird, the sports, the nerdy stuff, the geek stuff. You like cinema so much that you even go to, like, special theaters. Oh, you got to go. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if you're going to go, sometimes a, a normal movie, you have to rate a movie before you go to it. And you got to know, what is the caliber? What do right. I want to invest in this right. adventure? And some are just your local theater. Maybe you go on the <laughs> Tuesday $5 evening night. Right. But some, actually, we're on the eve of Batman versus Superman. So uh -huh. this is viewed 10 years online, so you know what it is. <laughs> uh, that will be viewed in a nice, comfortable, reserved seat. Reserved seating, seat, yes. That... Sometimes, I haven't decided on this, does allow for, basically you can go out to lunchtime and you can eat lunch while you watch it. So really? It's almost like, you bring in your lunch or they serve you lunch? They serve you. Wow. You go in, you can order, it's nice, quiet, low light. You think it would interrupt, you just hit a little button like you're on an airplane calling the help person. Uh -huh. They say, sir, what would you like? A vanilla milkshake, please. <laughs> Treat myself nice. <laughs> Treat so, yourself. Yeah, so, <laughs> do with anything. If you love something... You just kind of scale it up so when it's a good movie, I invest. So invest. I think this is actually a good transition into this next question because right, right. you've, you've brought up a couple of these topics already and I just so happen to have written these down. All right, all right. Uh, I want to hear, and you got to be quick on this. Okay, okay. What is your favorite movie? Holy schmoly. Your favorite cinematic adventure. Let me, let me state it that way. All right, super tough. I actually have a list for this. Shooting from the gut because of recent watching, I really love Inception. Okay. I love that movie. That's a good movie. Um, one that I usually would put on the top of this list, but I feel like it's gaining too much notoriety. It's almost like cliche at this point. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I watched this when it was original. I think it was like 1998. Boondock Saints. Oh, uh, yeah. A lot of profanity, I know, but I don't know. There was something about that movie that... that Spoke to me. That spoke to you. Um, the profanity spoke to you. <laughs> not Boondock Saints 2. Yeah, not Boondock Saints 2. Oh, I was yeah. Watching. First one only, but Inception, I just felt like it was really neat. Zoom movie. You know, I like I like to think a little bit, and that one too, you're like, wait, wait, yeah. what, what level of the dream are they at? Yeah. Um, all right, so favorite, uh, I guess we'll say audiobook then. Oh, wow. Um, this is actually something that's newer to me. I was turned on by someone in Hyatt, uh -huh. uh, turned on to reading audiobooks, FYI. Uh, I like the fantasy, the realm, and I highly recommend this. I, I like watching Game of Thrones. Uh -huh. It's actually called The King Killer Chronicles. Uh -huh. It's a three-book series. Currently, it's only two, so I'm just waiting like a little schoolgirl for the next <laughs> one. Um, but they are actually already planning a TV adaptation, movie adaptation. It's by an author called Patrick Rothfuss, so I'm just doing this uh, marketing for him. Fantastic book. If you like Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, it's kind of like those two mixed together. Yeah. It's not as... Childish, sorry to offend anyone, as Harry Potter. It's darker. I like it. It's a good one. It's a good one. Are you in any of the, you know, that seems like a big theme, and it's been over years, but especially in the last decade, like the, the utopia society kind of things. Oh, Do you like, like any of know, the, the Giver, the uh, Hunger Games, the Hunger Games and, yeah. and then the Divergent. Diver yeah, the Maze Runner, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. I would say, um, not, I enjoy it, but I'm not, I wouldn't, I'm not a, 
a groupie of it. Okay. You know, I, I definitely I've indulged because of the popularity of the Hunger Games films. Yeah. I do like them. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it's almost turning into the next vampire thing. Right. You know, it's it's almost becoming right. Twilightish. Yeah. And I'm not the, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that's what I would go with. I'd say fan, but not a groupie. Uh, okay. How about uh, favorite superhero? I know you're a big superhero guy. Wow, superhero. That's a pick. tough one. Um, I'll just kind of. It's a tough. That's a tough one because mm -hmm. we have Marvel. DC, I mean, there's so much to go with here. So I'm going to refine my decision to okay. the movie we talked about. You've been not fast about any of these, by the way. No, no, it's at okay. All. It's okay. I actually enjoy the explanation. Well, we're going to focus on Batman <laughs> and Superman. Okay. We talked about that movie. There's a couple extra characters in there. Yeah. In that example, I actually like Batman more. Okay. And I say that because Batman. Well, I like the dark nature of it, and yeah. not, I mean that literally because of his outfit. Right. Um, right. You know, no offense to America's superhero, you know, red, white, and blue Superman, but yeah. the ingenuity. He's got no superpowers. You right. Know, he's got to deal with these crazies in this world in whatever fashion he can. Right. And he's got mad money. I've always liked the smart guys. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. Batman, Iron Man. Even you know, Spider Man had superpowers, but he, he was clever. He, he was smart. He was a guy. smart guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree. That's that's usually where I tend to go. Yeah. So that's your DC well, guy. Do you have a Marvel? Uh, I would have to say, uh, oh man, just because he's so cool, um, Wolverine. Wolverine Opposite. Is cool. He wouldn't be described. No. As, well, the thing is, he's not book smart. He's a veteran of war. Right. He is tactically what is he like, sound. Four hundred years old. Something like he's been <laughs> in the Civil War, World War One. So I like. It. So he's smart, just in a different sense. But he's just. I like that. He's cool. He's just cool. All right. So I don't know if you mentioned. I think you might have lightly mentioned this, but uh, Manuel is also really into like board games, or oh, I don't yeah, know if you call them necessarily board yeah. games, but ga games, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, what's what favorite board game? Hmm. I have my favorite. Um, but I will talk about one that I really enjoy that I think everyone should know about. I'm gonna call it Ticket to Ride. Oh. So it's I think it's something that bridges the gap of people who might aren't be hardcore because I have played Dungeons and Dragons, Path. I've played these tabletop role playing ones. Tabletop, that's how I should refer to. So them. I've I've done those, but <clears throat> I think Rail Nation, uh, sorry, Ticket to Ride, pardon me, is the new monopoly of our age. Yeah, that's the game that you should have. You can have great fun with your kids. They sell it at Target now. They I mean, sell it at Target. I mean, it is a, uh, and I love the game. I do. Yeah, I can play it with my family, my wife, um, but. As any good board gamer has, I have a closet full of titles and uh, everything. Um, it's quite the vice. Yeah, quite the vice. So I, I think you're also you're also a video game guy, right? I do. Yeah. I, uh, I'm very greedy in that regard as well. You're <laughs> I, I, very greedy. I have an Xbox One. I have a PlayStation Four, <laughs> and I I I what? And I probably left this out. One thing that said going from hotels to this. Uh -huh. This was software. I really love hardware. I build my own computers. I've done it for the oh, longest time. So I, I thought, that. well, well, maybe this is. Maybe I can learn the software side. Right. But that's the only because th I was like, well, I have no relation to this field at all. Right. That was my only hinge point. It gave me some confidence. So I built my own computers. That's cool. So I usually get to pick up a lot when it comes to games. So I uh, first person shooters, role playing games, the whole gamut. You have you have a favorite? Um, favorite right now. It's always probably yeah. It does know. trend. I would say right now actually uh, a tactical shooter. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Oh, there yeah. you go. So I'd there say I'd say that's the one. Rainbow Six Siege. Wow. All right. Mm -hmm. So here's one that uh, we'll see. We'll see where you go with this. Right, Man right. Manuel's kind of unpredictable, so we'll see where he goes with this one. Yeah. Tell us something that uh, no one else knows about you. Oof. I feel like I've already revealed so you much. You have revealed a lot, um, and I've enjoyed it. But it was, what's something that uh, maybe I don't know that you have a special skill or a hobby that you haven't shared with us yet? A, gosh almighty. A weird obsession uh, that maybe you, you, you can't... Get away from. This is probably the one question I can't figure out because I like to think, and Devin knows this, almost everyone knows this in this office. I'm pretty open. <laughs> you're, pretty, you're kind of an open book, yeah. Um, I would have to say, my gosh, the only thing uh, that would be odd, I guess you could say. Actually, this is a recent thing. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this speak wonders of my wife either, but <laughs> she uh, she won't watch this at all. When I'm playing, my especially not this far into it. <laughs> it's true. Some board games she plays with me. So obviously, when I'm playing board games, she finds a way to entertain herself. Right. And one is actually, and we're relatively young, is crocheting. Oh, really? Okay. You don't think of that. So she started doing that. And I oddly very much enjoy it. Really? You I do was, it with her? Well, she was doing it. I'd seen her doing it. And then one day when we were both sitting there, she was making a, uh, a beanie uh -huh. for her niece. And I was like, well, I want a beanie. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> and uh, I just started doing it. It's really neat. Um, you know, you have all these little patterns. So, yeah, I, I, mean, that's like, I guess you can see a weird thing. That's Trust cool. me, it's a dark treasure trove. <laughs> and I, if I give in the time, 
something else could come out of this class. I'm just saying. I like that. Um, but yeah, it's, you yeah, can start crocheting one. like your beard into something. That'll be yeah, that'll be interesting. Make a make it maybe a, a, a koozie or a place to hold it in. Yeah. Or yeah. A, yeah. Um, all right. So <laughs> back to kind of kind of career questions yeah. here. Yeah. yeah what? Yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, you mentioned your so you, uh, Manuel's fairly. You know, it's been uh, six months. Officially, we went to the uh, city hall in. Uh, November. Actually, okay. actually, it was the beginning, the end of uh, October. Let me get my months right. Yeah. And we you better. <laughs> we, we, yeah, I gotta <laughs> gotta look at my phone now. Um, then yeah, November fifth was our kind of we did a private thing. Yeah. With the family. So relatively new. I mean, it's been what three months. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It seems like it's been four, uh, months, four months. Wow. It's going. So, um, all right. How for someone else that's looking to get into a career mm. like you? So you were kind of transitioning careers. Yeah. Um, for someone else that's kind of thinking about doing the same thing, mm. what kind of tips would you have for them as far as how to transition yeah. from maybe a non-IT career or maybe even just within you know maybe IT, IT and someone's not directly really. Yeah. To, yeah. Well, I guess I, I actually do feel strongly about this, and and a lot of times when I speak, because I've I've luckily gotten the ability to talk to people now in this field. Um, which is nerve-wracking always, <laughs> but I took a leap of faith when I did it. Yeah. And I actually had the resources and the access to make it be successful because of the people. Right. And I always, when I talk and mention this, I always say that fear will always exist, but just know in this environment, in this world, there are the things exist that will greatly alleviate that stress yeah. for you. I did. I honestly quit my old job. I initially had no idea what I wanted to do. I just wanted to make a choice. It was too, I felt like it was too demanding on my personal needs. Mm -hmm. um, and no, I love the hotel job. It's just, I think you have to be a little masochistic for it. <laughs> um, scheduling is just crazy. Uh, and I took this leap. And when I met these people and I saw the resources, even though it was this crazy world, I felt okay. So I'd say it's tough looking down something that you have no idea about. But honestly, pragmatics has been great. But all the people I meet at these events, yeah. all they want to do is help. The blogs, the videos. Right. Everybody's here to help everybody out. Really is. So I'd say if you're moving over, you're going to have that fear. But just know once you dig and you look a little deeper, it's not as scary as you think. That's good. That's great. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about how you got to where you're at and tips for others. Mm -hmm. um, what about the future for you? So what, what are some of the things that you're really passionate about doing in the future? Yeah. Well, in this world, I, I know I, a little bit about this. We've talked a little yeah. bit, but yeah. I love SSIS development. I love the, the you know that graphical like you, you the graphical representation of taking data, right. cleaning that data, moving it, being responsible of in you know business intelligence. Yeah, just getting the data where it needs to be, and then as well. What you're, you're a big guy in this is Power BI, taking that data and then making it remarkable, making mm -hmm. it visually stunning and also effective for business leaders. Yeah. So that's where I want to go. I want to continue on that development route, really strengthen into BI. It seems like a very, uh, it's a growing trend. Right. And also grow the knowledge and increase in, in cloud-based solutions. Um, these are big trending things. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, that's my goal. I, you know, I try to work with SSIS all the time. Pragmatics has great. Uh, we have great resources here, and we do classes. So the on-demand training that we yeah. have, I've uh, been tapping into that resource because, uh, you know, what is the? I can't remember the exact phrase, but you know, why uh, try to? It sounds terrible. Why try to create something new when you can mimic genius? <laughs> but I mean, I could work hard and just start trying to figure stuff out on my own, blank, no stuff. But there's people I can follow here. There are people who have already paved the way and I can get this information and then strive off on my own. Yeah, that's a great point. So it's, uh, that's the goal. And so there's a couple ways they can do that, right? There's there's free training that we offer mm -hmm. once a week where there's also more paid in-depth training. We mentioned the on-demand training platform yeah. that we have um, and live trainings that we do as well. So mm -hmm. that's that's all that's all very helpful. Uh, well, Manuel, thank mm -hmm. you, sir, for uh, interviewing with us. I think that actually got uh, very personal and I enjoyed hey. it. If you've yeah. ever worked with me on support cases, I think I come off that way as well. So yeah. now you know me a little more. Yeah, you can, you'll, you'll see. Uh, you probably get Manuel's personality come through pretty pretty clearly. He's, <laughs> he is an open book. Uh, but it was good for you guys to be able to meet him. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and join us for our next Who Is session. Thanks a lot. Bye.